It's been a bit too long since my last video, but it hasn't been without a good reason. I got a new toy. My Ender 3 V2 and I were having a bout of disagreements, as we do, and it tried to call my bluff when I said that I would drive out to Micro Center and replace it with a Bamboo Labs printer. Well, sure enough, I went to Micro Center, chucked a P1S combo into a shopping cart, and parted with a handful of cash. To say it was well packaged would be an understatement. It is the only thing that I've ever bought that required reading an instructional booklet to unbox it. That is simultaneously a good thing and a bad thing. Bolting the AMS to the chassis certainly kept it secure, but so did all the precisely cut foam packing and inflatable infill. I'm just going to breeze past the unboxing as there are plenty of videos out there and the manual does a decent enough job. Powering it on for the first time was fun. The AMS light sequentially blinked followed by the screen turning on. It immediately gave me a reminder to carefully read the instructions, which I had already done when I wasn't able to unpack all the parts 10 minutes ago. It then gave a gentle reminder to remove the screws that secured the build plate to the body. I'll go ahead and take care of that real quick. These red arrows are pretty helpful, I guess. After setting up the Wi-Fi, the printer prompted me to run a self-test. This part took some time, but I trust that it knew what it was doing. The printer slowly raised the bed along the three Z axes, stopping every so often to do a little wiggle. I'm not entirely sure what it was accomplishing by doing that, but it looked pretty cool. Next, it started the motor vibration and resonance testing. It rapidly pulsed the X motors back and forth at an ever increasing frequency. This looked really neat in person, but I think it looks even cooler on camera. The vibration became so fast that it started to show up on the rolling shutter before eventually reaching such a rapid movement that it could no longer show up on camera at all. This process is also really loud, especially with the door open to the front. Comet, the cat you saw earlier, was not a huge fan of this. Loading the AMS or automatic material system was incredibly easy. The sealed lid opened smoothly. Once a roll of filament is fed into the geared feeder, the system automatically begins to pull it in and test how much force it needs to use. It also briefly loads the filament to ensure it's smooth travel to the hot end. If you're using bamboo filament, it's even more intuitive as each roll contains an RFID sticker that the AMS reads. It will automatically populate the information about that roll in your slicer, including the color and material. The AMS boasts even more examples of thoughtful design. These pill-shaped bars on the front left and right of the unit actually swivel to seal the AMS closed and can also be used to prop the AMS open to allow for airflow and evaporation of humidity. And my new printer produced its first piece of poop, I, I mean purge. The printer then went through the process of automatic bed leveling, where it probed the bed across multiple points, pausing every so often to do one of those cute little wiggles. It's truly a clever but logical decision to make the nozzle double as a touch probe. By default, under the standard profile on the Bamboo P1S, it prints at 200 millimeters per second, like most printers, it takes the first layer a little slower, usually around 50% of the maximum, to ensure good bed adhesion. After that layer, the fan kicks on and it really gets down to business. This printer is not quiet. You can hear it with the door open here, and again with the door closed. Once the print was completed, the hot end quickly performs a nozzle wipe across the silicone roller next to the purge chute. It then launches itself towards the front left corner. I was curious what this step was, so I took a closer look and found that the hot end pushes itself into a protrusion. This depresses a lever that's connected to a small razor blade in the hot end. This cuts the filament in a gap just between the heat break and the extruder. The AMS then retracts the filament back into the dry box. Out of the box, zero manual adjustment or calibration and this Benchy looked nearly flawless. Aside from the nearly unavoidable hull line, this one was indistinguishable from my best Benchy printed at a fraction of the speed. My next step was to actually test the AMS functionality, and printed this adorable calico cat keychain designed by AZ over on Maker World. I cannot describe the sheer wonder I felt seeing this come off the plate. Multiple colors, all printed into a single layer. It does, however, produce a somewhat significant amount of waste because it has to switch the filament and purge four times per layer for several layers, it adds an enormous amount of time as well. A purge bin was obviously my next print. Seeing this machine do its thing felt like watching my first 3D printer all over again. 
The same level of excitement, wonder, and amazement filled me as I watched on while it laid layer after layer, quickly and accurately. I was no longer watching it looking for failures, or even expecting failures. I was watching it with enjoyment. My next test was to see how it performed with supports, and this, again, with no adjustments to the default settings, was mind-blowing. But Bamboo had also included a sample roll of their support for PLA material. This was a weak material that should in theory detach better than anything else. Unfortunately, this couldn't be further from the truth. Not only was this filament nearly impossible to remove from its interface, but it crumbled and shattered to pieces when trying to remove it. This isn't even factoring in that it had to do filament changes and purges every layer in order to use this. I had to break out my big little brute can just to try and catch all the broken pieces being launched as I desperately tried to scrape it away. I eventually gave up and just decided that I would vacuum the floor later. Needless to say, I cannot recommend this filament to anyone for any purpose. It is awful in so many regards, but it was the first negative experience that I'd had with this machine so far. Another major perk was the integration of Bamboo's Handy app. This allowed not just for remote monitoring, but almost full remote control. You can browse the full Maker World library, select a print, and start it on your printer with no need for a computer or slicer in between. I chose this fun looking P1S Benchy, started and finished the entire print without leaving the comfort of my bed. The last thing I wanted to test was pushing the printer to its stock limits. I selected a classic print, the Cali Cat. I print one of these for every new roll of filament and I keep a collection of them on the shelf. I started the print and allowed it to complete its first layer normally. I then immediately pushed the print speed from standard, past sport, and straight into the maximum ludicrous speed mode. This increased the print speed to 166%, pushing the speed from 200 millimeters a second to a blistering 332 millimeters per second. This was well past the point where my Ender 3 V2 running clipper would begin to experience belt skipping. But the P1S didn't stutter once, instead seeming to lean into it like a high performance sports car. With filament flowing through the hot end like water through a fireman's hose, the layers were unable to fully cool before the next one was being placed atop the previous. This wasn't an issue though, ramping up the part cooling, auxiliary, and chamber cooling fans to 100% allowed the filament to cool and harden just as fast as the hot end could lay it down. For those unfamiliar, the P1S has what they call an auxiliary fan. This is a large blower that sweeps across the entire print bed to provide supplemental cooling for the part cooling fan, which is located on the print head. This Calicat didn't come out perfectly, but it did come out in 10 minutes flat and didn't fail. Overall, I am truly impressed with the out-of-the-box experience the Bamboo P1S provides. I've spent two years calibrating, refining, and repairing my Ender 3 V2, and it is such a welcome change to use a device that requires none of those things. I am finally able to spend more time on designing things to print rather than spending time trying to figure out why things won't print. In a strange way, I'm starting to look at this printer more and more like I do my 2D brother printer, where I ask it to print something I've typed out, and it does so without any user intervention. I don't need to adjust the inkjet print head. I don't need to set the page margin offsets. It just works. The bamboo is very much in the same vein and positively showcases the major improvements that 3D printers have experienced over the past decade. And as of right now, I don't really have much else to say about the bamboo P1S. I've been using it for about three weeks now and I've made a lot of fun projects. So keep an eye out on the channel because those will be coming up soon. Thanks for subscribing, thanks for watching the video, and I'll see you next time.